2015 has been a fabulous year for the garden. The thing I'm proudest of is just the um, fabulous esprit de corps that we built at the garden particularly in the leadership group. It's just a wonderful group of people. We're, we're on the same wavelength. We spend our meetings working out what we're going to do next, how we're going to invent the future, how we're going to make this place better. We are incredibly grateful to all of our donors. Without their support, we couldn't, we couldn't operate, and uh, let alone attack the future, which is our job. Research in the bone biology division is focused on osteoporosis and on tumours that grow in bone, particularly cancers such as breast and prostate cancer, bone metastasis. One of the biggest highlights of this year has been the development of a, a strategic alliance called the Bone Alliance with Osteoporosis Australia and the focus has been to use that to translate the research of the division. The uh, regeneration and growth of the oncology service under the influence of basic research and the optimism of precision medicine is really begun in 2015 and will be uh, an important theme over the next decade. My team does a lot of work looking at pathways that regulate diabetes and regulate pre-diabetes. I'm really proud of the fact that my division is truly, truly um, integrative and is full of people trying to develop uh, an ethos whereby we can all work together and come up with really great discoveries for the health and well-being of Australians. Well the Genomics and Epigenetics Division started in 2015 and the motivation behind setting up the division was to capitalise on our genome sequencing data and our expertise in that area. So fundamentally, we wanted to use that information to be able to go deeper and understand genome biology. So in 2015, the Immunology Division had some fantastic highlights um, for our research outcomes. We published many important papers, and this was a good representation of the efforts of many labs across the division. The Immunology Division here at Galvin, I think, is a real core plank in the research portfolio of the Institute. We have um, some really dynamic labs which range in the experience and expertise and it's really great to see some early career scientists being promoted at the faculty level last year as well. The Division of Neuroscience works on all things pertaining to the nervous system, predominantly in the brain. In 2015, the Neuroscience Division's research focus has expanded significantly to include the capabilities of neurogenomics. This is an area that is an intersection between Garvin's genomic strengths and the neuroscience strengths of our division. In 2015, our centre has made huge advances in enabling the diagnosis of rare disease. This year, the thing that I'm proudest about is the integration of a very diverse team. We have bioinformaticians, research and laboratory scientists, process engineers, software and database developers, geneticists and pathologists. And we're all working together with one goal, making genomic testing routinely available in the clinic. Since 1989, the Garvin Institute of Medical Research has been directing a world-leading study of osteoporosis in the city of Dubbo in western New South Wales. The Dubbo study looking at osteoporosis is the longest and largest of its kind anywhere in the world. I'll go back to the early 1990s, we didn't know anything about osteoporosis. We didn't know what was the magnitude and the prevalence of the disease in the general population. We did not know about the cost. I mean, it's a very simple thing, but we did not know about the cost of treatment of autoprotic patients. We did not know what was the risk factors for our fracture. The Dubbo osteoporosis study is an incredibly valuable study precisely because it is so long term. It has captured men and women, a number of studies have only captured women, for instance, in osteoporosis. Well, I've been involved with the Dubbo study about 26 years. I was a bit young when it first started, so I've been involved for about uh, 24 years. And we will keep coming back. Yes, we've got a few years yet. <laughs> the population within Dubbo is fairly uh, close-knit in a way, in that people tend to stay in Dubbo and they don't move around like they do, for instance, in Sydney. And because of that, we have people who come back, they don't just drop out of the study. They basically think they own the study. 
that is the study is theirs and and they're correct we would not have the study if it wasn't without these people but it's interesting it's very interesting and we think it's worthwhile the Dubbo study is a good thing it's really transformed our understanding of osteoporosis we used to think it was something that only happened in little old ladies people thought of hip fractures or people bent over what we realise is something that occurs across a wider age range. It affects both men and women. It affects virtually every bone in your body and not just your spine or your hip. And it's associated with huge impacts in terms of quality of life, healthcare costs, and indeed premature mortality. After many years of data collection, Garvin researchers on the Dubbo study had amassed enough evidence to determine which factors put an individual at greater risk of fracture. Uh, so we curated the double database and then you know we ascertain the incidence of fractures over time, bone loss and other clinical risk factors and then we use a specific algorithm to search for those factors that were associated with fracture risk. Professor Nguyen and his team were able to distill this information into the Garvin Fracture Risk Calculator a groundbreaking algorithm that provides an individualised assessment of fracture risk. The Garvin Fracture Risk Calculator is essentially a distillation of 10, 20 years of epidemiological evidence from the study that allows us to work out what the risk is. It is as good, if not better, than anything else that's currently available worldwide. It's been validated in other international populations. It uses a few simple facts, people's sex, their age, whether they've had fractures, whether they've had falls, and if we have it, their bone density. They're important predictors of fracture. When you put them together, you get a much better idea of what that person's individual fracture risk is over and above just the bone density. Now, Garvin researchers are working to ensure that the Dubbo Studies findings, and particularly the Fracture Risk Calculator, will lead to real changes in clinical practice in osteoporosis. It's an urgent task because osteoporosis is currently underdiagnosed and undertreated in Australia and worldwide. People still do not get treated for osteoporosis, even after they've had a fragility fracture. For a female in Australia, maybe less than one chance in three of being treated. If you've had a fracture, for a man, it's probably less than one in 10, maybe less than one in 20. So what we want to do is to make that wonderfully accurate and reliable fracture risk calculator available to the whole community to help them inform their medical choices. General practitioners are incredibly busy. They see a wide range of medical conditions and they've got to make decisions within five minutes or ten minutes. And so what we're trying to do with the Garvin Fracture Risk Calculator is to integrate it into the software platforms that they're using so that they can then see and talk to the patient about what the fr patient's fracture risk is very, very quickly. As well as working with GPs, Garvin has partnered with Osteoporosis Australia to make the fracture risk calculator as useful as possible for members of the community. So the initiative with Osteoporosis Australia to get the fracture risk calculator out to the wider community really is to translate our knowledge into their actions. So we're going to undertake a very broad campaign to go to the web, to take the test, which is only a, really probably a minute, and to identify whether they actually have a risk. It's very important, and I think it's a clear, clear example of real translation of uh, proper research into real life setting. That interface between the actual basic research and then being able to use it to improve people's health is what is so vitally important. She's still the best 84 year old I've ever seen. 86 I am being. 86. <laughs>